Now I know what you're thinking. Thank goodness, a Mr. Sin video. And not only just a Mr. Sin video, it's an economic video on real GDP per capita. What? It's like he's reading my mind. This video is going to be talking about real GDP per capita. We're going to touch on productivity in this video, standard of living. We'll also get into real GDP and nominal GDP. But the main focus of this video is to make sure that you can understand by the end of this video, what is real GDP per capita and why is it so important? While watching the video, make sure you use the guided notes. You can find them in the description below. They go right along with the video and will help you memorize and understand all of the information that I'm talking about in the video. Also, make sure to subscribe so you can get notifications of when I post new videos and it helps support the channel. So sit back, relax, and let's figure out what's going on with real GDP per capita. Now, so far in Econ, when we've been talking about GDP, we've been talking about nominal or real GDP. Now, remember, GDP is gross domestic product. This is just looking at all of the final like new products that we have created or services in our country for one year. Now, nominal GDP has inflation affecting that number. And real GDP just takes inflation out of it. That's the major difference between the two. And they do a great job of showing the short term, the year to year or the one to five years. But there's one thing they don't factor in and it's a big factor. It's population. Over time, countries grow and countries shrink. And that's really important to be able to understand what's going on with wealth in the country. How productive is this country? So we need to look at our third GDP and that is GDP per capita. And by doing this, we will be able to see how much is being produced per citizen. And it'll give us a lot better accurate measure of what's going on with our country. So real GDP per capita is one of the most important economic indicators we could look at to see what's going on with our society. In order for us to figure out what the real GDP per capita is, we would have to take our real GDP and we will divide it by our current population. This is gonna show us just how much we're producing per person. This has a lot of implications for a society. If we start to see all of a sudden that we have a huge population boom, but our real GDP is not increasing, that is gonna be a big red flag. We're gonna to start to see production slow down. We're not gonna get as much output and the amount that people are getting and also just living off of will start to shrink. On the other side, if we start to see our population stay stagnant or maybe even decrease, but our GDP keeps going up, that's showing that we're becoming more productive and people are having a higher living standard. They are able to consume more. We're seeing more production and more goods and services to go around for everyone. So a higher real GDP per capita is huge in showing the health of a nation. It also is connected into the standard of living and also happiness. Normally for a country, if they have a higher GDP per capita, they're going to have healthier citizens, happier citizens, and more productive citizens. All great things. Now I know what you're thinking, Mr. Sin, how does real GDP per capita change? And it changes in a variety of ways. The first one is just population. When population goes up or down, that will have a big impact on our real GDP per capita. The other one is production. Production is huge for a society. The more a society can produce, the more that our GDP will rise. The less that we are productive and the less that people are working and efficient, we will see it go down. Think back to those PPF charts where we have our maximization curve and you have an impossible and inefficient use. We always want to be trying to maximize all of our production. Now, if you look back at the past like 100 years of the United States, you'll notice our real GDP per capita has gone up. We are now more productive. We're a lot more productive today. People are making more and more goods per person. It used to not be that way. That's one of the reasons why too, you can start to see wage increases because as people start to produce more, you're worth more to that employer. Even if you look back to human geography, if you remember your agricultural unit, when you talked about densities and we went into the physiological density, looking also at like agricultural density and things where we're seeing how many farmers could actually work a land. And like the United States had one farmer per like acre, while Egypt might have 62. 
We have become more efficient. That's the whole thing it's showing. Technology has let the United States have less farmers, less human capital, and more machines to be able to produce more and more food than other countries around the world. Everything's about efficiency and productivity. And when you put them together, we get growth. And economic growth makes things happen. We can see the price of goods start to come down. We can see more goods produced, more jobs, more money for the economy, for the government, for the people, and just overall great times for the country. Now, all this productivity comes from our four factors of production. Do you remember those? Those were a while ago, but if you don't, let's go over them. Land, labor, entrepreneurs, and capital are four factors of production. When these factors of production are used efficiently and wisely, we see productivity rise and we see more production. And not only does our productivity help just create life better for us in whatever country that we're talking about that's becoming so productive, it also helps the world. Think about it this way. If we are more productive as a society, if our real GDP per capita rises, that means people are making more. They're making more money, they're making more goods. Businesses are now gonna be able to hire more people. Those businesses will then also be able to pay their people more. More people having more money means they can consume more and buy more, putting more money into the economy. At the same time too, with all this new spending and new growth and new jobs and new development, the government now has a larger tax base. So they're generating more revenue. And when the government generates more taxes, they can pay off the debt. They can provide more services for their citizens. They can now trade more with other countries. And we start to see demand just in general for trade on a global level increase. If the economy is doing well, people want to buy more. So imports go up, exports go up, even foreign aid can go up. We can start to support other countries. And so we can see that productivity and a rising GDP per capita is huge, not just for the local economy or the country, but the world in general. All of this stuff is great. And at the same time too, if real GDP per capita and productivity go down, we see the opposite happen. Government is going to lose tax revenue. Services would be cut. Trade might slow down. Net imports and exports will shift. We'll see foreign aid possibly get cut and just people in general will have less happy lives. So that's how it connects into productivity. That's how real GDP connects also into happiness. You can see this kind of trickle effect that happens that has a great impact on a country and the world. Hopefully by now you're getting a pretty good understanding of exactly what real GDP per capita is and how it can affect the world and a country. Remember, real GDP per capita is real GDP over population and it's going to give us the best accurate information on the long run of a society. Now it doesn't factor in things like income inequality and other social issues, but we'll get to those another time. Hopefully this video helped you better understand just GDP in general. I'm Mr. Sin, this was Economics. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get notifications when I post more videos and check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'm Mr. Sin and until next time, I will see you online.